Welcome to the Retire Right Podcast with Larry Heller. You deserve complete financial advice. There's no acceptable alternative if you want a plan to live well and on your terms. Complete financial advice equals complete peace of mind. Now, let's get into this week's podcast episode. Well, hello and welcome. Uh, Today we're going to talk about the four pillars of your complete financial house. Now, this gets pretty deep. So our goal today in talking with Larry is to make it so that you get a 30,000 foot view of what this 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 pillar in this house is really going to look like. And then in later podcasts, we're going to dive into each of the four pillars in a lot more depth. But in order for us to understand why you created these four pillars, Larry, let, let's talk about retirement in today's world. What What really has changed, man? Well, a lot has changed. Uh, It's not your grandparents' retirement anymore. Uh, Years ago, your grandparents retired. If you may remember, maybe they worked to 65. They worked mostly at one company, got a gold watch, lived a few years longer, and then passed passed away. So that's not happening today. We're living longer and you know longer and longer. I tell a lot of my clients that basically the second chapter in the second lives, in the second half of their lives, is coming. Um, a lot of people living 30, 35 years past retirement, and hopefully they'll prepare for that. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of different things that people look at, and the word retirement is not, tra- you know, traditional, whether they're retiring early or they're changing careers or they're working part time. Um, the, the world has changed in, according to retirement. Well, let's let's dive into that a little bit more deeply, because uh if you don't have something to retire to, right, uh, there have been some really startling statistics that have said you will die that quickly, just like my parents graduate or my, my parents, grandparents, a generation and, and much like yours. So talk about how you as a financial advisor help people uncover what that next chapter of their life looks like. Well, I, I agree with you. you. You have to stimulate, you know, stimulate the mind says that that, you, that will help you avoid certain diseases going, you know, going forward. So what we try to do is create these four pillars so somebody can start to plan for that next chapter, that next, the next phase. Um, and hopefully from this four pillars, they'll then have a, you know, broad roadmap, roadmap to, re- to retirement. Um, and that's different for, you know, that's different for everyone. Not everyone is going to, you know, re- retire, stop working, and then just play golf every every day. Right. Um, uh, <clears throat> you know, sometimes people, you know, come to us and they say, you know what, I really want to s- slow down at 60. And Or we've had clients, I have a single client, he kind of retired at 58. Um, and not with millions and millions of dollars, but he had a game plan and we you know, looked, went through these pillars and put a game plan together to make it, you know, to make it work. Well, I, I, one of the things that, uh, I, I've dealt with, with clients all a lot is, you know, well, man, I am going to play golf and, you know, or I'm going to fish all the time and, you know, 18, 24 months happens. And all of a sudden they're like, man, I, I don't want to play golf anymore. So now what do I do? And they really lean on people like you, their trusted advisor to help them figure that stuff out. I mean, you know, how awesome would it be if they were end up to do something, maybe like a second career or part-time work? How often do you deal with stuff like that? So actually, clients are actually coming to us with that more than we have to kind of say, what are you going to do besides, you know, besides golf? Um, We had one client, you know, came to us and he had been working, you know, the same company for years and years as an IT consultant. And he said, I'm just, I'd like to really stop at age 60. Um, And how can we make that happen? So you know, we created the four pillars, uh, which we're kind of doing a white paper now, but we also created what we call our complete financial house to make sure all areas are taken care of. But the first thing is really trying to figure out what you're trying to accomplish. And then looking at it from the big picture, you know, you know is, can they? Is their dream and their goal doable? No, sometimes it's not. But a lot of times clients are either making certain decisions so they can do something different. Um, 
we have a lot of professional clients who are saying, you know what, I'm not going to work 60 hours a, a week every week. I want to start cutting back and how can I create a cash flow analysis or a retirement plan that allows me allows me to do that, but then I'll work part time into my, you know, into my 70s. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got two psych Psychologist, one psychologist, one psychiatrist that are married to each other, and they're both in their mid seventies, and they're still seeing patients, but they're doing it on their time, you know, you know, part time. Uh, we have other clients that at age fifty decided to change their career, uh, going, you know, going forward, knowing that they have, you know, forty plus years left. So the clients are you know, are coming up with the ideas that are different than just traditionally retiring. But now, how do we how do we put a game plan together to make their dreams become a reality? Well, let's let's break that down, right? So you're talking about these four pillars. What are the four pillars? And then let's jump into them uh, just briefly for each of the four, okay? Okay. So the the first one is really the mindset. That's where everything s- starts. You know, people usually when they think about retiring, the first thing they start to look at is, well, what are my assets? What are my investments? And can I make more money on my investments? And um, how much do I need to, you know, to accumulate? And we tell people that's the wrong thing really to start with. The first thing is trying to get your grasp around your your mindset on what you really want to accomplish. Um, And the, the mindset is really broken up into really three different areas. The first one is really the, the vision. Um, I, you know, I ask a client you know, to paint me a picture of your life five years from now, 10 years from now, beyond that. What's gonna be important to you in the next phase of, phase of your life? Start to visualize, visualize that. Um, you know, I, I'm just a big believer that if you visualize, you'll make some, some things happen to get there. Um, you know, uh, I'm a you know big golfer, and Jason Day. If you look at him playing golf before a big big shot, if you watch the um, uh, the golf tournament this this week, he happened to be in the in the in a playoff. And before he takes a, a shot, he closes his eyes and he visualizes what it what it's going to what it's going to be. Um, you know, Jim Carrey. There's a you know big story on Jim Carrey on you know how he carried around a check with him made out for ten million dollars before he even got started when he was a struggling a comedian, and he kept that in there until he was able to cash that. So I'm a big believer on you know on on vision. Uh, and the other parts of, of a mindset are, are, are really kind of you know the the purpose. You know what's important to you. Prioritizing that them, setting time frames, writing them down. Um, you know, if you have them written down and you have your vision, all of a sudden now you're kind of motivated to accomplish them. Um, and the other part is as you're working through these, after you visualize and you've written them down, is really the discipline to stay on course um, and making sure that, you know, you have, you know, checkpoints along the way to accomplish what you want to do. That's fantastic. Uh, it sounds to me like you're uh, you've done a lot of work on on motivation and and coaching and research on how to get people to uh, really stick to these plans uh, because the mindset is vitally important. Larry, I really like where you're going with this. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're part you know coach, part financial advisor, part accountant, part certified financial planner. Um, you know, everything's got to come together to accomplish the you know accomplish the the. the their goals, uh, you know, individuals that, you know, that, that put this together and kind of look ahead and put a retirement plan together are three times more likely studies have shown to accomplish what they, you know, what they are. Uh, so, uh, so again, putting, you know, putting them down in paper and visualizing them somehow make that happen. I even kind of did that in my own my own life in my own world when I've decided to change my career from from being an accountant all the way to being a financial planner is what did I visualize my life so it's not just retirement you can do this you know in earlier stages in your career absolutely so after you help these people find this mindset now you're going to put this the second pillar in place correct yes so, uh, so the second pillar is really, you know, the the, the strat, you know, the strategy. Um, what creating a a, a blueprint um, in order to complete your financial financial house. 
So now, you know, you, you want to have, you know, visualize and you need to access, access your current circumstances. So you can kind of see the strategy from a, a blueprint, it's like building a, <clears throat> building a house. You know, you don't just start taking wood and putting the rooms together. You need to have an idea. You need to have that blueprint to make your visualization of your goals and your dreams, you know, come, come true. So now we're going to do everything here to say, okay, how can we go from where you are now to making it happen and to eventually living your living your life? So we want to bridge you from where you are to where you're going to be, and that's where the strategies come in. Now, after strategy, and you have the strategy in place, and, and, and you as the financial advisor – have started to build this blueprint and people can start visualizing this house that they're creating. What is the, what is the third pillar? Where do you go from there? Well, now we're kind of getting into the, the nitty gritty and the details because you do need that in order to make this work. So uh, that's really where the third pillar is the tactics. Um, and I, what I basically say, it's really all about the expenses. Um, so so a lot of people, they don't even know how much they're spending. Sometimes it's, it's strange to me that people don't really know how much they're spending, but if you don't really know how much you're spending, you don't know how much you can save. So you don't know how much you can accumulate to get to where you want, want to be. So the first thing is determining what your expenses are. And we can go into that more at another podcast on how to really do that without going through the, the traditional budgets but there are ways of coming up with what your expenses expenses are. And then once you do that, you know, boil them down between things that are what I call survival. We kind of have a triangle of survival expenses, your lifestyle expenses, and your legacy expenses. Obviously, you need your survival expenses. But then if you look at your lifestyle and your legacy expenses, these are, you know, flexible. So when you look at your visions and your goals – which ones you, do you want to spend certain amounts of money on? So that's really important to try to figure out in order to, you know, to really do the tactics. Gotcha. Okay. You know, you know the next thing then is obviously the income. You, you, you know, how much, you know, you can have these great dreams and goals. And most people are realistic. They're not basically coming in with an unrealistic goal or unrealistic. They, they're dreaming big, but not un, unrealistically big. So the first thing is to really try to match up your expenses with your, with your income. Um, you know, so on your survival expenses, how much will your Social Security be? Do you have a pension? So kind of matching your fixed expense, your fixed income with your survival expenses. Um, and then so on and so forth between lifestyle, you know, lifestyle and legacy. So the expenses and the income, really knowing them and planning for them and projecting them going forward um, are, you know, a, a big part of your, you know, the tactics. Well, let's dive a little bit deeper into tactics, because I think this is one of the things that people don't truly understand about your position within their life, Larry. So you've talked about some ethereal stuff, some philosophical underpinning stuff that you help them with. Now you've really started to bring tactics into play, but there's a next level of tactics here. Can you dive into a couple of those for us, please? Yeah, sure. So, you know, everything well, I always like to do, what I call a complete financial house, because every decision you make has another effect on something on something else. Um, for example, uh, you know, taxes. Um, you know, you don't want to just create a retirement plan without looking at what the tax ramifications are, because it's not just what you earn; it's what it's what you're going to keep. So. Tax planning and deciding when you do retire, where do you take the money from? Do you take your money from the qualified account, your IRAs or your 401k? Do you take it from your non-qualified? Do you take a little bit from each? And each one of those decisions affects your tax bracket. So you need to kind of look at those and plan for that, not only the first part of your life, but the second part of your life, and then especially when you hit 70, because 70 is a magic number for required minimum distributions. So a lot of times you'll you'll start in a high tax bracket, retire, drop to a lower tax bracket, and then go back up later on. So really planning for that could save thousands of dollars over your life, which has a meaningful impact on your goals. Uh, another big 
factor is the Social Security. You know, when do you take it? Do you take it at you know, 62, 66, or, or 67 as they're um, required? Um, uh, the time frame for when you're taking it is, is going from 66 to 67. Or do you wait to age 70? Um, and there's also spousal decisions to make. They've changed some of the laws. Some of the planning isn't as great, but they, you know, they do still have some planning that needs to be done. Um, so those are two, you know, two of the two of the ones. Of course, there's also investments. You know, what is the right investment allocation to project for your rates of return? Uh, a difference of one percent in your returns um, over 30, 40 years could be millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having the right investment allocation. Uh, so that's another, you know, kind of tactic. Cash management. Um, you know, how do you protect and how do you make sure that when we do have something unforeseen happen, such 2008, are you, are you protected for that? Or if you get ill, are you protected for that? Um, you know, we have a, a strategy, our kind of our bucket strategy with different time frames and we can, we can have a separate, you know, podcast on. Um, so those, you know, some of the tactics that, that we'll use or you need to use to coordinate everything to get to where you want to be. Fantastic. Well, let's dive into that fourth pillar. So we've just talked about the, the first three pillars, which were, uh, what, what do we have? We've got mindset, strategy, tactics. And the last one is interesting because this is kind of the ongoing accountability that you need to have with your clients, correct? Right. I mean, the world changes every, you know, every day. So, uh, so you, you, you come up with this, this plan and you may be five, 10 years away from retirement. So let's just say you're in your fifties and we've come up with this plan to reach or all your goals. And, uh, you know, and all of a sudden five years down the road, you kind of say, you, you know what, I'm on track for this, but, um, I decided I don't want to live in New York. I want to go somewhere warm. And now the plan needs to change. So, so not only attracting for accountability and making sure that they're staying on track with their savings or their goals, you have to kind of look at this and say, okay, they may change and the, their plan is going to need to change. Or like I said, there could be an event such as 2008 or there can be a, you know, there can be an illness, or their expenses now, uh, for whatever reason, are higher than what they, you know, planned. So they, they've got to continually track this and continually look at the complete, you know, complete financial house because one piece in the house that changes could affect everything else. Absolutely. I love that analogy. And I think that's important for people to visualize retirement like a complete financial house, because what usually happens, and I know you see this all the time, Larry, is it's like they have a sunroom, but no house built connected to the sunroom, right? It's like they have this ideal thing, but they don't realize that they need to have an entire house that's built and that you're the kind of guy that can really help them build that house. A you know, absolutely. You know, once they start to see, you know, we have these glass boards that we use in our conference room when they come in, when they come in, we put up all their goals and their ideas first, and then we put in all their information. But there's about six different boards. And by the time we add and we put everything up there, they kind of say, oh, you know, now I can see the whole big picture. I can see it clearer before rather than just looking at everything you know, in a silo. Absolutely. So here's the deal. Now that we've got these four pillars, what happens next? So where do you and I go from here? Besides diving deeper into each of these four pillars, what are some of the other things that you want to make sure that our listeners know with this podcast? Well, again, you know, this is the, the four pillars are kind of just, you know, cut just the start. Um, it, it, it doesn't happen very quickly and it takes a long time. Sometimes it takes uh, you know, a year to kind of put this game plan together. And sometimes be the husband and wife, when we're meeting with you know, couples, are not on the same page. So they've got to get together on what they visualize. Last night we had a couple, couple in and they're kind of using me as a referee um, 
trying to help them make a decision because they're totally apart on what their visions and their their goals are. So it's not something that's going to always happen, you know, right, you know, right away. There's going to be work on everyone's part. Um, without the the work on getting the expenses and the income, we have clients coming in. We need to know everything. We need to know every you know piece of, of, about them and all the financials about them because if something's missing, then that could be a big hole in their in their plan or a big leak in their big, big leak in their house. Well, we so, should we should add uh, that that Larry also is a part time uh, marriage counselor too. Which, by the way, I know that you uh, your friends in financial services industry say that <clears throat> there are a lot of times where you are that referee, which is which is really important. Now, do you want to take a second and give everybody some of these these seven steps um, uh, on to to make this whole thing happen, or do you want to wait for another podcast with that? No, I mean, I, I, I'll, I can go through. I can go through the seven steps in another podcast. We can, you know, we can do. We can do that. Okay. So, really, really, it's to, to summarize the four pillars and the complete financial house. Is step one is really visualize your dreams and your goals. Take a step back and see what they, re, you know, what they really are. And then once you kind of you see them, write them down, prioritize them, and then set time frames. Um, and a lot of times we can we do this interactively in the first meeting or meeting or two before we even get to, into any of the numbers. The first two steps are really the foundation for the house. Once we know what your goals, your objectives, your timeframes, your priorities are, because sometimes it's multiple m- multiple ones. I have you know one client, the wife is you know, adamant about providing for um, college for the grandkids. And that's a higher priority to her than purchasing a second home, which the husband wants to do. So we need to see, can we do them both? If we can't do them both, which is a priority? Um, the third step is then is really to gather all the facts. We talked about the, you know, the, the, in not only just the income and expenses, but all the facts on, on, on everything, on their kids, on their um, parents sometimes, because they may have to help them out. Um, so it's really gathering the facts and then summarizing all the income and expenses. Uh, the fifth step then is creating the strategy. Um, this is where we can create the strategy and the actual step-by-step um, processes that are needed to reach their goals. Um, the sixth step then is really the execution. You know, working as a team, you know, we, we're interactive. This isn't a plan that we do uh, that, that's a cookie cutter plan that's given to them and then you're on your way. This is interactive, not only in the first two steps, but every step throughout. Uh, And then finally, the last step is really, you know, tracking it and monitoring your progress in order to get to the life that you want to live. Fantastic. Well, Larry, thank you very much for your time today on helping everybody understand what the four pillars of your complete financial house and give everybody the opportunity to understand that this is a house building process. And if anybody out there has ever built a house from scratch, from stick, you realize it takes a while. And the more planning you do on the front end, the happier you are with your house on the back end. Anything else you want to share with everybody today before we sign off? No, I mean, the only other thing is we are going, I am starting to write a book. It's going to take a while, but even a more detailed book. But we do have a white paper that's going to be available on our website. And some down, sometime down the road, we'll have a, a more detailed book. Magnificent. Well, make sure you go to the to the uh, website and download that white paper. It's also a great opportunity for you to share stuff. One of the nice things about podcasting as a medium is it's very, very, very easy to share with your friends and family. And if you heard something today that you say, wow, man, that Larry guy's got this right, that would be great for you to share. So for a Larry Heller and the Retire Right Podcast. I'm Matt Hallard, and we'll see you guys soon.